This week in the Grace Notes Lounge, I'm very happy to be joined by Mark Edwards. Mark has an extraordinary trip coming up, and I would like you, Mark, to tell me about it. Well, thank you very much, Emma. Um, I'm off to Kurdistan this Wednesday, and I'm going to make a recording of the National Youth Orchestra of Iraq, who are performing in Erbil on the 15th of September. Kurdistan is a place where you don't often hear people going to re- do recording, Mark. How did all this come about? This came about because of a contact I had from my university days. Yeah. Um, about two months ago, I was contacted by Paul McAlinden, who is the musical director of the NYOI, and he was desperate to have somebody come out to Kurdistan to record the concerts. And... Um, he was unable to get anyone to come out from the UK, so I offered to go over um, to help him out. And I'm also taking a cameraman with me, yeah. and together we're going to make a documentary about the people of, and about the region. Have you done other documentaries like this before, sort of um, a- adventure sound recording? Um, my background is primarily orchestral and classical um, classical music, although I do fair amounts of work in drama and, and film. Um, I'm very fortunate to have Cam Matheson with me, who has a, an extensive background in documentary. So whereas I'm the newbie, he's very experienced. So as far as the documentary goes, Cam will take the lead mm. and I will dutifully follow with my boom. Mm. And how, how are you going to get there? I was just sort of interested in the practical things. Of how does one travel to Kurdistan? Well, it's actually fairly easy. Kurdistan as a region, is seeking as much investment as it possibly can. Therefore, um, the region is is secure, and it's been looked after by the Kurdistan regional government. There aren't a huge number of airlines that travel straight into Kurdistan, um, but we are are going via Abu Dhabi. um, And, yeah, so it's just basically a plane trip from Melbourne to Abu Dhabi to Mm. Erbil. Is Kurdistan a sovereign state now? No. Kurdistan is what you'd call an autonomous region. Okay. Um, The the level of autonomy is quite high. They have their own government. It's a coalition government. Um, But, yeah, they have their own sort of foreign um, foreign policies. They have their own visa requirements. So you don't have to go through the the rigorous Iraqi requirements to okay. get a visa. You can go straight into the airport in, in Erbil and get a 10-day visa. Oh, really? So so just just to confirm, Mark, just to, um, let, give us a little sort of visual exercise of where Kurdistan is in relation to Iraq. Well, Kurdistan is part of Iraq. It's also part of Turkey, Syria, and Iran. So it sits on the borders of those countries. Mm. Um, as a region, uh, the Kurds have, off, have, have long sought their own homeland. That has not yet happened, yeah. but it's something that they desperately search for. Yeah. And um, the, the region that we're going to is what, what's called Iraqi Kurdistan, and Erbil is the capital of um, of Iraqi Kurdistan. Okay. Mark, what do you know about the Iraqi Youth Orchestra? Well, I know that it was um, formed back in 2008 by a 17-year-old Baghdad-based pianist called Zahel Sultan, and she was somewhat dismayed for the lack of support and communication between young musicians in Iraq. So she looked for some help to form this orchestra from outside of Iraq, posted a message um, looking for a musical director for an orchestra, and Paul McAlinden put his hand up and said, yep, that sounds a great project. I'll help out with that. So now she has an orchestra that con- consists of Arabs, Kurds, Assyrians, um, Turkish Kurds, um, Armenians, and they all come together and play both Western and Iraqi classical music. There's also a very close link with Germany as well. Okay. Um, Paul's based in Germany. And yeah. I think after this concert, the orchestra is actually going to uh, play in the Beethoven Fest. Oh, really? Yeah. The one in Bonn? Yes, the one in Bonn. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. And so um, 
the teaching for these uh, young musicians, do teachers come to, is it like a camp? Is it like the Australian Youth Orchestra camp? Yes. yes. Okay. There are quite a few freelancers that will come to Erbil. Yep. Um, in fact, the, the workshops have already started. They started about two days ago. Mm. So you have um, a combination of American and European freelancers that will go into Iraq to, to teach the, the players. Yeah. Um, you'll find a lot of them um, actually teach themselves during the year and also have lessons via YouTube as well. Oh, okay, and, and using Skype as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's a, good, that's a great resource. That's is, fantastic. Yeah. So, Mark, do you know, because there'll be many people listening to this interview who will think, wow, this is just sounds fantastic. Um, how can we help? So do you know if the orchestra needs anything? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, the, the orchestra is always in need of funding. Um, it's in need, I suppose, of a profile because of its. Um, it has really a job to promote sort of peace and harmony, not just in Iraq, but around the world. Yeah. So really, um, you know, funding is always going to be a, a challenge for the orchestra, mm. um, you know, but also, I suppose, moral support and, um, you know, any, I think from, in, from instrumental perspectives, um, you know, there are sometimes issues with players getting decent instruments. Yeah. Um, but as far as practical needs, um, yes, it's really a funding challenge for them. Okay, and w is there a website that people can go to to find out more? Yeah, they have a website. It's um, http uh, www.friends-nyoi.com. Can you say that again? Yep. Their website is h... I'll, I'll, actually, I'll start again. Um, their website is www.friends-nyoi.com. Okay, so people can go there and maybe find out how to donate money? Yes, they can. Okay. Yes. Yep. That's fantastic. Mark, will you speak to me when you come back? I would love to, yes. Wonderful. Do you know what they're going to be playing, actually? Yes. Um, they're going to be playing a couple of uh, pieces by Iraqi composers. Yep. Um, a composer called Ali Alfman, who is based in the Netherlands. A composer named Mohammed Amin Izzat, who's based in Baghdad. Um, a piece specially written for the orchestra by Sir Peter Maxwell Davis. Oh, great. And a couple of pieces by um, composers such as Haydn and Beethoven. We're doing the Beethoven Violin Concerto mm. and Haydn 104, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's just wonderful. Who's the soloist in the Beethoven? Um, it's a Kurdish violinist called Zana Jahal. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to hear them. I shall... Be sure to bring you the recording when we speak next. Thank you very much, Mark. And for recording uh, people who are interested in microphones, what microphones are you taking? Um, I'm taking a bunch of Sherps microphones with me. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'll just take all my Sherps in the suitcase and hope they stay in the suitcase between now and yes. the time I arrive. Okay, well, good luck and bring, bring back wonderful stories. I shall do. Thank you so much, Emma.